On my way home, stumbling on the pavement, on the pavement, yeah, yeah. No sleep in my body, last night got me wasted, yeah, yeah. Ain't nobody calling my phone up just to make sure I get home safe and sound, yeah. I'm pretty sure if I fall down and don't get up, nobody would care, yeah. Don't wanna be alone anymore, so I might as well sleep with the doors unlocked. Ooh, ooh. So the sun has a pretty cool effect on the river. Just as it uh, reaches 32 degrees, it's hitting a spot on the river and uh, it looks like it's actually smoking. You see a little bit of a mist just rising up off of the river. Pretty cool. As I was traveling back from Georgia, I wanted to stop at a few places that were historically relevant. One of the places I wanted to stop was Tannehill Ironworks, which was established in 1829. And during the Civil War, it was one of the largest producers of iron for the Confederacy. It only ceased operation after being partially destroyed by federal troops in March of 1865. A couple of other spots that I wanted to visit were the Duane Hayes Campground in Mississippi and the Pendleton Bend Campground in Arkansas. The primary reason that those were interesting to me was the fact that not only do you have small traffic, which would be recreational traffic, but you also have large barges that transport a considerable amount of goods. Now, it's interesting because it's not done on roads, it's done on roads of rivers. That sounds odd, but they're actually numbered much the same way that I-5 or I-10 or other highways in the United States are numbered. And while that may be common knowledge, it's very interesting to know that there's so much traffic on the rivers that is transported much the same way that trucks on highways or railroads transport goods. And that's done all throughout the Ohio River Valley all the way through to the Rocky Mountains. In a gown and a crown, Another beautiful aspect of my travel are the great people that I meet along the way. When I was at Duane Hayes, I came across two campground hosts that basically went out of their way, one to make sure that I was comfortable and to also provide me an opportunity to get some firewood that had been left by campers from the night before. Thankfully, this park uh, said uh, th that you're able to forge for wood, you're able to use wood um, that has fallen, okay, not, no, no, uh, chainsaws or anything. And they did say no chainsaws. They didn't say no saws. <clears throat> and I've got this, uh, Agawa, which is actually pretty cool. Boreal 24, um, nice blade that, uh, almost cuts with just the weight of the blade sliding down. And then of course, when I pull back, I put a little bit of downward pressure and it goes through these, uh, these limbs like a knife through butter, hot knife through butter.
been working on it. <laughs> it was pretty chilly last night. Um, I bought some wood over at the uh, was the tractor supply. Yeah. And I went through a bundle and boy, I tell you, it was tempting to break into another one, but I got to let it last for the next three days. So. Yeah. You got, uh, you got a little heater in your car? No, but uh, I have a heating blanket I can plug into a, a little power supply, Jackery. Okay. I don't know if you're familiar with that, but basically I just throw that heating blanket over and it's got a timer on it, which is pretty cool because I can set it for like a low temperature, two or three out of 10 and uh, run it for about an hour and I fall asleep comfortable. If I wake up cold, just turn it on for another hour. And just get through the night. Good deal, man. I do have an extreme cold weather sleeping bag and when I was in the military, um, I was always extreme cold weather anyway. So yeah. I'm, I'm somewhat used to it. But thank you for your service. Absolutely, it's my pleasure. Y'all are one of the few places, which is greatly appreciated, by the way, that allows you to gather wood a little bit. You know what I'm yeah. saying? I mean, if it's laying down over there, broken down or whatever, I'm just bringing it over here and kind of yeah, gather, and yeah. I can supplement it with the wood that yeah. I've got. Anything that's on the ground, you yeah. can burn. Absolutely. As long as it fits inside of that fire ring. <laughs> well, I got a little saw, and I'm just taking these these bigger pieces and just breaking them down, and those are, those are really good filler pieces just to make sure that I got that Yule log is going to go on tomorrow night. That one on the end there. Yeah. Um, because it's supposed to be as cold tomorrow night as tonight. And I'm going to kind of get a feel for it, but I'm going to let that thing when I love whenever I get a good, good Yule log with a lot of cold base around it, just let it kind of turn it and, and let it run. Yeah. Um, that way I can go to bed a little bit. Like a shoot, if I didn't have a fire, as soon as the sun goes down, I'm in there. I mean, <laughs> we, you, there's, there's no reason not to be honest. That's right. That's right. <laughs> well, all right, man. Just stay warm. We'll do it. We'll do it. Thanks a lot, man. I appreciate you. Yeah. I'm here for the next three days, and uh, then I'll be um, heading back west. I've got some real exciting news that uh, that I wanted to share, um, or a possibility of uh, some really exciting news. Chrome Valdez with Van City Van Life has offered to send uh, a guy that's working with him, Paul, down into the United States. Chrome's not coming to the United States. Uh, he's, he's traveling around in Canada, and I'm not able to go into Canada because I need to renew my passport. But Paul's going to come down, and I did get an email from Chrome's assistant, and Paul's going to come down, and we're going to try to coordinate our calendars. Um, I'm going to be... Um, I'm going to make a concerted effort to get wherever it is that he needs me to go, regardless of the uh, regardless of the temperature. Probably the most annoying would be if he wanted me to come to Seattle and I needed to spend February and March in uh, nothing but cold rain. That would be uh, that would be difficult, but not impossible. I've done it. I've done it with a, a rucksack and a lean-to. So. I've got much more than that right now. So if that's a possibility, then he'll do a van tour, van tour, quote unquote, overlander tour of Sarah with everything that we've done over the last year and a half, build out plus a little bit of background on my story. And that being the case, um, man, wouldn't that be awesome to, uh, to have that hit a channel that has a little over a quarter million viewers. But again, um, exciting news that's in the future, we're going to see how that works out. Howdy. Hi. How are I was you? I just uh, checking those sites that they just left today. Uh huh. And I noticed um, there's a couple of good, it looks like a couple of good logs on PPC. Oh, you know I'm on it. <laughs> Thank you so much. I appreciate there. that. There's a gentleman down here, he camps out here a lot, and huh. he usually makes his rounds when everybody leaves, getting what they've left behind. Yeah, so you know what? The fire that I started today was sitting on that pit. What they did was they put bigger logs on the bottom and then a bunch of uh, 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 kindling on top. And they tried to light the kindling, and it <laughs> oh, didn't light. From top to yeah, top. exactly right. So, so they left it there. So what I did was I grabbed all the kindling, brought it over, set it down, put the big logs around it, and just started the fire. It was yeah. perfect. <laughs> well, he he makes his rounds pretty good. He usually stays here a couple of weeks when he's here. So I saw him. I thought I'd let you know. I really before. appreciate you. Said 56, right? Yeah. You're awesome. They're over, like, but next to a tree. Okay, you're awesome. Thank you so much. No problem. Bye bye. Oh, oh, oh.
but I'm gonna prioritize this because it is something that if nothing else could get some exposure on my calendar. Jumping from cliffs so high Trusting our wings to fly Sometimes we're crashing down But we get up and start from the ground And I, I really wanna know, really wanna know If I let me figure out where the road goes Falling down, I will keep on searching for my highs You can say I lost my mind, I will keep on holding my head high Even if the sky is falling down Can you dig it, fool? 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 Can you dig it, fool?